What's going on there, everybody? Today we are going to be talking about the Bandai Movie Monster series Godzilla Singular Point Godzilla Amphibia, aka Godzilla Form B. The Chili Cheese Goji Dog Supreme over here is a bit of an offshoot of both Varen and his former form over here, Godzilla Aquatilus, aka Goji Footlong. I am very much an admirer of this design because I think it's just weird, it's different, and it's nice to have a little bit of a reference to Varen in the design. It's just the figure could have definitely been a little bit better than it turned out. Let's get started. Now, I'm going to throw you all for a loop today, and we're going to start with articulation. And you want to know why? Ah! <laughs> Yeah, the only articulation you're going to be getting with Godzilla Amphibia over here is going to be the front slouchy looking legs over here. There will be nothing in the tail, although the glue seal on mine is a little screwed up. I'm not going to risk ruining this thing. Obviously, you're not going to get anything in the torso, so... Uh... Yeah, articulation on this thing is a bit of a letdown. I was at least expecting the tail to move, so this is going to be a half a star from me. You could do better, Bandai. But anyway, back on track, we have Godzilla Amphibia on the front of the Godzilla Amphibia tag, and look at this design. I absolutely love it. I know there's a number of people out there that aren't happy with the little kaiju references instead of actual kaiju in Godzilla Singular Point, but quell your anger for a little bit because this series is going in such a weird way that I have a feeling that those kaiju are just going to end up showing up anyway. And if you abolish the entirety of the series after not even seeing it and only seeing a bunch of designs, well, sucks to be you. Anyway, this tag is very, very nice. I really do love this design of Godzilla. We are going to get the same exact thing on the back of the tag. And on the inside of the tag, we're just going to get a differing silhouette of Godzilla Amphibia over here. And that's pretty much it. Dad, Dad, the perfect cast! The face, while so unmistakably Varen and Godzilla, it just looks like it lacks the detail that we're used to from the Bandai Movie Monster series. Now this just might be me, but after getting the absolute blessing that was the Godzilla Singular Point Anguirus, I had my expectations for this thing set a little bit higher, just a bit, and I do feel like a couple of steps were missed here. I don't know. I feel like this could have looked so much better, and especially after yesterday's review where I was talking about the Bandai Movie Monster series Godzilla vs. Kong Mecha Godzilla figure, link in the description below. This feels like a bit of a letdown, and I don't know if it's because I was spoiled with that figure or if it's because the details on this really ain't all that great, at least on the face. I don't know. I'm not 100% feeling how this looks. Like, I love how this looks, I just don't love how this looks. From the front, we can see that the horns over here are only painted on one side, which is something that we saw in the promo art, so I'm really not going to be upset over that. But I am going to say Bandai, do better. Got that out of the way, and the detail on the skin over here is very, very nice. I do like that. And the horns on either side of Amphibia's face are very, very nice. Just to add a little bit of visuality to my case here, I really do feel that Anger has pulled it off a lot better. I mean, like, the crackling of the skin, the paint, the detail on this is so nice. But this feels like a minor step back. Like, you see what I'm seeing here, right? Like, it just feels a little bit on the rushed side. Which isn't something new in the Godzilla franchise, but when it comes to this, oh man, I feel like it could have just looked a little bit better. Just a little bit. But anyway, let's start talking about other points of the figure. The skin, as I said, is very, very nice. It's bumpy, it's textury, it looks cool, it feels pretty cool, and the horns on the top of his back over here look pretty cool too. We'll talk about the dorsal fins in just a second here. This figure is definitely excelling in some detail that I really, really like. It's just the lack of paint that further kind of kills this figure's hype for me. Like, I feel like it definitely should have been a lot better than what we got, especially after receiving a figure like Anguirus the last time. We've got three claws at the tip of the tail that will remain unpainted just like the whole second portion of the tail. I know I really shouldn't be surprised if the Bandai Movie Monster series dropped something with not a lot of paint about it, but still, uh, I feel like this could have used something more. Before I continue on though, 
you see that we have this like little outliney thing going on here from the neck all the way to the back of the hind leg over here. I found that very interesting because this is yet another design choice that kind of carries over from a quadalis. As you can see here, we can see that very same underwatery looking webbing going on on a quadalis. And here it is on Amphibia, just a little bit less prominent. And looking at Amphibia's hind legs, we can see that he's got three toes and a pinky toe on each side. Then looking at a quadalis, he's got the exact same thing going on here. And yes, that does carry on over into Ultima's final design as well. He got three big toes and one small pinky toe. So I do like that there is consistency in these designs. I just really, really wish there was more paint going on here. Now the paint on these spikes over here is okay. Yes, it's being spray painted on and everything. And something like this was just bound to happen eventually. And, you know, the application in these ain't bad. Certainly not the greatest, but it's when we get to the dorsal fins over here where things really start to shine for Godzilla Amphibia. As just like Ultima and just like Aquatilus, the detail on these, fantastic, beautiful. They are perfectly painted. I really would have liked if these horns over here were painted just like these, but I feel like knowing Bandai, that would have just been a mess of colors. But at the same time, with a figure like this, I feel like even a mess of colors would have been acceptable. Or maybe not. I retract my last statement. What I don't retract is the thought that you should all follow Saruta Jira on Twitter so you can see all the crazy paint that this figure and many others should have had because look at this, it's beautiful. Mm. I'm in love with this design. I'm just not in love with it in figure format. I thought it would look a lot better. I thought there'd be a little bit more to really talk about, but there isn't. So let's talk about the arms. The front arms over here are webbed, bumpy, and just really grody looking. I really, really like that. I like that it really does look like an evolution from Aquatilus. And again, I really do admire the fact that certain design quirks are being carried over from form to form. And I know I already talked about them, but I like that the hind legs look the exact same way. And before I move on any further, yeah, there is going to be details on the bottom of the hands and on the bottom of the legs over here. Really do appreciate that. Looking at the bottom of the figure, you're going to get some very basic detail, you're going to get some paint splooshies over here, and then looking at Godzilla Amphibia's big old thumb thumb over here, we can see trademark Toho Company Limited, Bandai China, bunch of numbers, and yes, Godzilla Amphibia do be having the dad bod right there though. Now I know why I'm so hard on this figure. It's a physical representation of me in Godzilla format. But a little design detail that I really do enjoy is that we have this little splotch of detail going on right here. This is, of course, present in some way, shape, or form on the Godzilla Ultima figure, as you can see. And I think that's really, really cool. In fact, when you look at some of the design photos for this thing, that piece of Amphibia's chest, his stomach, is actually colored a very familiar color, and I think that's really, really cool. But taking a closer look at everything over here, the detail is magnificent on this uh, bulbous neck, this bulbous chest, and this bulbous papa belly. Just look at that. Beautiful, beautiful line work going on. And even when you get to the bottom of the jawline over here, the bottom of the chin, the detail is fantastic. And before I give my final rating on paint and detail for Amphibia, I just want to take another close look at the face. And yes, the detail by the eyes is really, really cool. I like that there's actually a sculpted in pupil there. There's a lot of really great musculature line work going on there. It's very, very nice. I do really wish that the teeth over here were painted a little bit better, but they've gotten a lot smaller and definitely a lot less prominent than it was in Aquatilus. But I do have to hand it to Bandai. These being as small as they are and applying that paint to the upper jaw over there, that must have been a hard feat. And it looks really, really good. It looks pretty decent from the front as well. Kind of looks like he's missing a tooth right there. But even on the opposite side too, I have to give Bandai credit for doing that upper row over there and having it not bleed over into the skin tone. Very cool. But that fang though, and the spaces around it, eh, eh, was done a lot better on the other side. So the other side definitely could have used a lot more of that paint. And when looking at the mouth, you can see that there's a whole bunch more detail inside of the mouth, a lot more bumps. The roof of the mouth is going to have some very nice detail, but the back of the mouth is going to be left mostly blank. The little bumps and grooves are really impressive. The bulbous nose over here is really impressive. There's a lot of impressive things going around with this head sculpt, but a part of me just really isn't fully impressed with it. Again, especially after getting something like Godzilla Singular Point Angurus last time. This feels like a 
tenths of a downgrade. So when it comes to Godzilla Amphibia's paint, what's there is nice, but I do feel like we could have gotten a bit more. That's going to be another half star from me. When it comes to the detail, it is very nicely detailed on pretty much every point of the figure. I do wish the face was a little bit better, I really do, but the more I look at it, the more I see, and the more that I really feel what's going on here, but at the same time, mmm, I'm so conflicted on this because there's so many cool things going on with this figure, and I just keep gravitating towards the face and it not being as great as I thought it would be. So I'm really battling with myself here because I love the detail everywhere else on this figure. I just feel like the head could have been a little bit better. But I also feel like I'm really blowing this out of proportion because the detail is very nice pretty much everywhere else. Screw it, detail's going to get a full star from me. And that is going to result in a two-star rating, which isn't the greatest, it's not the best, but it's not the worst or the most terrible. It's just the extremely middle ground. I'll call this the Sonic Forces rating. <laughs> it's just very, very mid. I do feel that there are some parts of this figure that really could have used the extra amount of detail to it. There's definitely paint that should have been on this figure. Just know that I'm not upset with this. I'm just a little disappointed. I thought that it would translate a lot better to figure format. Again, I love the Godzilla Amphibia design and I was really, really hoping that this figure would pull through so I can love it even more. But I guess when it comes to Amphibia, if he's going to get any other figures, maybe it'll be from Sham and maybe that'll be the Sham release that I actually pull out the money for. Like if they do a morphological change set for Godzilla Ultima and all this different... Uh, uh, designs and everything, I'd probably pick that up, not gonna lie. For the most part, this thing could have been just a little bit better. There we go. Well, everybody, that's about going to wrap it up for the Chili Cheese Goji Dog Supreme over here. I've said it all already. Thank you all so much for watching this video and yesterday's video. It really means a lot, and it would really mean a lot if you subscribed, because I go through my analytics all the time, and I see that most of you watching aren't subscribed, so please, subscribe. I would really, really enjoy having you here. I talk about Godzilla. That's a huge a lot, but I am working on a bunch of other projects that are not directly Godzilla related, that being Ultraman, that being the man Masters of the Universe because I've rediscovered my love for Skeletor. Yeah! And I got a whole bunch of other stuff planned, so I assure you it's not just Godzilla over here. I've been Shin Rob Jira. Thank you all so much for watching. Patrons, thank you all so much for becoming Shin Rob Jira patrons. Haven't said that in a while. And I will see you all with the next video, which I don't know. I could be taking these monkeys out the boxes, or I could be talking about the fresh candied catch of the day. I'm not sure yet. I'll decide soon. I'll see you all then in there. Peace.